the second, so the second part was I, th- I feel like Hockey Canada puts all kinds of boundaries on things, which I, I understand why you have to do that to some degree. Okay, well, let's swing into that for a second because yeah. that's actually that's a good topic. So then what do you think about kind of the second point you made when you were talking about earlier was the, the boundaries part of it, how some places that you play, like in Toronto, for example, you're allowed to do, kind of do whatever you want. You can go wherever you want. Yeah. Whereas you come down here and you're stuck based on yeah. where you live and yeah. whatever. So how does that play into how you think about the the minor hockey system? Like where you think feel like it's going or maybe some problems that you see with that or how that's contributing to the development positively or negatively? Well, okay. So with the boundaries, this is what we, we see this all the time. I can't tell you how many conversations in a week someone tells me that they want to leave. They want to leave their yeah. team. And and sometimes I understand. Yeah. But I've, I've said this before. Like let's just say if you live in uh, – Kitchener, Waterloo. Okay, I don't want to say Windsor. Okay, because this is our yeah. place. But Kitchener, Waterloo, or London, London when they're Elgin, right? So if you play, if you live on this side of the street, you belong to Kitchener. On this side of the street, you belong. You, the, literally, that's what it is. A boundary, yeah. right? You play for Waterloo. So let's say you play for Kitchener, and you got a. Let's say it's a not a good team, and the coach is a complete idiot, like complete, yeah. right? Whereas you got your your buddies over here, maybe you don't go to the same school or whatever, but it's like literally across the street or a two minute drive, and you've got a coach that really cares, that that teaches, that does things right, and you have a nice team. Like just because you live on this side of the street doesn't make sense that you can't go play here. Mm-hmm. So what happens is this coach over here that's that's that doesn't run a good, or the, maybe it's the whole program itself doesn't run a good program, but because you live five minutes over here, you cannot play on a, on a good team. So you're stuck here. Maybe it's an organization that doesn't, you know, they do a lot of things wrong, let's just say, and uh, maybe the integrity, whatever. I'm just going, whatever. Yeah. We're it, 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 it hamstring someone from going over there. Like that's causes problems. So what happens is I've seen this so many times. A parent, parents will fake a divorce, right? To go yeah, legit. And, and buy a house or rent a house to go on the other side of the street. Like, does that seem extreme? Yeah. But then, yeah. but then, if you've got like you've seen some of these some of these guys running the programs, it's like, but I can't have my kid around that guy yeah. or these people. So it's like that's the extent we're going to go, so my yeah. kid can play hockey. Yeah. That's nuts. And and if you go play double A, it's so much worse right. now. Especially that, now. that's not really right. an option, right? right? So th- that that's a really good point. So I think what I wanted to the question I wanted to ask then is because we've talked about this a little bit before the boundaries thing, how there's positives and negatives depending on how you look at it. Because then if there's no boundaries, then you can get the, you can just stack a team and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And we will be getting there after. Yeah. But to me, at least uh, maybe you agree or maybe you don't is I would rather it be, especially in a place like this, like Toronto is a tougher situation because there's so many people that stack in the teams can be, because one team could end up being so much better than another. But and the dynamic of like Windsor and Sun County or London, Elgin or Kitchener, Waterloo, I feel like that kind of incentivizes a little bit more of the supply and demand competition type of thing. Where if, if you're the Kitchener organization and you have a horrible coaching staff and everybody can jump ship and go to Waterloo, maybe that forces you to have a better exactly. your organization better. That's, that's what I was right? going to say. Yeah. So on the positive, if we put it in the best light, it's the you kind of incentivize you have to have a better program, and if you don't have if you don't have a better program, you're gonna fold. Your program will fold, and that's just what will happen. That's right. right? Maybe you have to lo- start looking at okay, so kids don't want to play here. Yeah. So what do we have to do better? Well, yeah. maybe we need to have better coaching. We got to get good yeah. coaching. Well, maybe we have to have maybe a guy from a couple old school hockey players, not old school, but guys that were been in the game that understand the game that can could, could come in with an, within an organization and be a coach mentor, mm-hmm. which doesn't go well a lot of the times, but, uh, or help us like have, uh, uh, a guy in whatever area are that's really good at power plays that can just mm-hmm. teach the concept of power plays yeah. to people or, uh, systems and stuff and kind of oversee yeah. or run good skill stuff as an organization. And you bring more to the table yeah. than just, putting on a jersey right well and because we, we've seen this where if there's no real recourse for change within the organization because no matter what kids have to stay in play then things can get real stale with the people that are running it because there's no yeah, consequence there's they no can consequence. stay forever they don't have to change they don't have to do anything because they ultimately have the power over you if you want to leave you need to come and ask me right 
So if you if you're stuck there and an organization is really being run poorly, it actually doesn't matter. There's no real consequence because there's nowhere for you to go, right? This is why you get a lot of people saying, "Well, I'm just going to go from I'm going to fake the divorce and go over here or I'm going to get my like here in Windsor, Detroit's across the river. So if I can get an address in Detroit and have him go to school in Detroit, well then he's going to leave." So we're seeing a lot of decent players or really good players leave for other cities or go to Toronto because you can hide in Toronto, right? Your dad could have a business or you go to a private school and all that kind of stuff. And then you can, you can hide that. And then, and and then you get away from your local hockey development, Mm -hmm. which to me is this really sad thing from the roots of hockey. It's really sad because you're, you're, you know, you got some good quality coaches that, are tr- are doing their best and they they might be good but because you're not in those big centers they they're fighting to keep you here. Mm-hmm. And last maybe not lastly but very importantly is you you're asking or you you think it's a good idea for your 13 14 15 year old kid to move away from home early. Yeah. And for, for what? That's the other thing. Yeah. So so that and then we could talk about money. So where, where do you, how do you want me to well, go about I was going to say the other 